Ken Tovind made this video seminar series on creationism, young earth creationism, like years and years ago. I think 2003 maybe is when it came out. These things still hold up because all of these arguments are still being used today. So I wanted to go through some of these out of sheer interest and see what we could uh, find, see if we can debunk some of it. So let's give this a watch and see what it has to say. Uh, we left off at about 34 minutes, so let me just step back. If it all came from a Big Bang, I mean, what's, why are they all so different? Very different compositions. And why do some whole galaxies spin backwards? CNN did an article, Goofy Galaxy Spins in Wrong Direction. I said, sir, why are these things going backwards? He said, doesn't matter why these things are going backwards. Uh, there are a billion reasons for that. He's trying to say there's conservation of angular momentum, blah, blah, blah. That's correct. There is a law called conservation of angular momentum. It doesn't matter which direction they're spinning. They will maintain that momentum. That's the law. It, it doesn't say the, the law of conservation of angular momentum does not say everything has to spin left. If it said something like that, it would be one thing. I said, I don't know. Why do you think they're going backwards? They're not going backwards. Even framing it that way is propagandistic. I was hoping he was going to ask that. I said, sir, it's real simple. You see, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and God did it that way on purpose just to make the Big Bang Theory look stupid. Okay, which God? Which God did it? Was it, I mean, you, obviously what you're supposing is that it was Jesus or Yahweh or, yeah, Yahweh, father of Jesus or whatever. I have no idea how you got to that conclusion, but it's completely unreasonable to believe that. I mean, it, it's a complete stretch to say the conservation of angular momentum is proof that God exists. But even if it were, you still haven't proven which God exists. It's just like Ray Comfort's banana, his claim that the banana proves that God exists or whatever. Which God? Doesn't prove anything, first of all. And second, which God, which God do you think it proves? <laughs> yes, amen. Yes, amen. Now, I do believe in the Big Bang because the Bible teaches the Big Bang. It says, the heavens shall pass away the great noise. In the original Greek, that's a Big Bang. So there's going to be a Big Bang. It just didn't happen yet, okay? So kids, if you go to school and some professor says, hey, do you believe in the Big Bang? You should say, yes, I do, and you better get saved and get ready for it. The Big Bang is coming soon to a city near you. <laughs> By the way, if... The I guess he's talking about Armageddon. Is he saying Armageddon's on its way or whatever? The world came from a big bang and slowly evolved over billions of years. Why did Jesus die on the cross? What's the purpose of uh, Okay, that's an interesting question, actually. What he's getting at here is you can't... It's kind of nonsensical to simultaneously be a Christian and also accept basic science. Let's keep listening. Big bang is coming soon to a city near you. <laughs> By the way... If the world came from a big bang and slowly evolved over billions of years, why did Jesus die on the cross? What's the purpose of the death of Christ? Um, in my opinion, the entirety of religious belief is nonsensical and ridiculous, but I have no problem with people believing it. I really don't care. You know, even if God did create the world in like 6,000 years, Jesus dying on the cross is still a ridiculous story. It doesn't matter. God sent himself to earth to sacrifice himself to himself to appease himself. I mean, really think about this for a second. It's nonsense. It's nonsense from the start, and it always has been. I mean, he's trying to make it out like it, it's less nonsensical if there was a Big Bang. No, it's just as nonsensical. It doesn't matter if there was a Big Bang or not, or if there's evolution or not. It's equally as ridiculous either way. So I'm really not sure what he's trying to prove with this. And when the Bible says God's going to restore the world like it used to be, <laughs> restore it to what? More death and suffering? <laughs> we cover more on that theistic evolution position in video 7. 
And the Big Bang Theory is ludicrous for numerous reasons, okay? If the Big Bang Theory were true, the matter would be evenly distributed, but it's not. That's simply not true. Um, I assume what he means is we wouldn't have galaxies and stuff because everything would be evenly distributed. Well, the problem is that there's such a thing as gravity. Have you ever heard of gravity? Matter gets pulled together. It joins together with each other because of gravity. That's why matter appears to not be evenly distributed. And aside from that, who says it needs to be evenly distributed? Did you just make that shit up right off the, like, right off the top of your head? Serious, serious problems with the Big Bang Theory. Even Fred Hoyle said, I have little hesitation in saying the sickly Paul hangs over the Big Bang Theory. Get more on that in the book called The Evolution Cruncher. It's a 900-page book. So a sickly Paul? Uh, I'm sorry. A sickly Paul hangs over the Big Bang Theory. What does that mean exactly? Can somebody give me some insight into that? That's weird. Only five bucks. Excellent book to give away to every kid in your high school. The second law of thermodynamics tells us everything tends toward disorder. If you leave something alone for a while, it's going to rot, rust, die, fall apart, or break down. Nothing gets better by itself. That's what the Interesting that he's talking about the second law of thermodynamics. This has been long debunked. Of course, this is an old clip that, he's, that, that we're watching here. But even then, people understood why it was ridiculous to think the second law of thermodynamics proves God. And the reason is because the second law of, thermodyn the second law of thermodynamics does, in fact, say that things tend to move toward disorder. That is very true. In a closed system, Earth is not a closed system. When energy is not being fed into a system, it tends toward disorder. That's what the second law says. Earth has an energy source that's feeding into it, the sun. The sun is feeding energy in, and that basically prevents the second law from pushing things toward disorder. Um, it's the same reason why an, a car engine allows you to move forward, because energy is being fed into the system. Yeah, all other things being equal, a car will sit there and rot. But things aren't all equal. The car has an energy source, so it's going to move forward. That's how this works. Second law is ridiculous. I can't even believe they went with it. It's so obviously fake and fallacious. The Bible teaches, The heavens are the works of thy hands. They shall perish. They wax old as doth a garment. Nothing gets better by itself. Take a look at your hairdo when you wake up in the morning. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Everything tends toward chaos, right? That's true, unless there's energy being fed into the system, which in this case, there is. So the second law is not contradicted by evolution or, or anything else. Here is Sue at 20. Here she is at 90. <laughs> and here she is at 3,000. Everything tends toward chaos, folks, all right? All you have to do is nothing, and everything deteriorates, collapses, breaks down, wears out. That's what the second law is all about. Everything... As long as energy isn't being fed into the system. ...is getting worse. Nothing's getting better. But the textbook says, humans probably evolved from bacteria more than four billion years ago. Was your great, 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 Evolutionists will say, well, Hovind, don't you know if you add energy, you can overcome the second law of thermodynamics? That's correct. That's what the second law is all about. Absolutely. So he just spent all this time, like, straw manning the entire thing. And the Earth receives energy from the sun, so the Earth is an open system, and that's how we overcome the law. I understand the argument, but they're missing the point. The universe is a closed system, number one. Number two, adding energy is... The universe, uh, we don't actually know that the universe is a closed system, first of all. But second, it doesn't matter because we have an energy source within the universe. You have an energy source inside of your car. Your car presumably is a closed system, but there's gasoline in the, the tank. So it doesn't matter if the universe is a closed system or not. 
And we don't know that for sure. It's destructive unless there's a special mechanism to use and harness the energy. Adding energy is destructive without a complex mechanism to harness the energy. Interesting. That's not necessarily true. And also, there are complex mechanisms to harness the energy. It's called photosynthesis, for example. See, the Japanese added a bunch of energy to Pearl Harbor one day. They didn't organize a thing for us, did they? So a few years later. He's giving us an example of energy being destructive. That doesn't mean it's always destructive in every situation, unless a complex system exists to harness it. Later, we added some energy to a few of their cities, didn't we? You know, returned the favor. Didn't organize anything for them. Adding energy is destructive. The sun adds Not always. Energy to the roof of your house, but it's going to destroy your house. The sun's energy will destroy the entire house. The sun's energy will destroy the roof on your car. It will destroy your upholstery. The sun's energy will destroy your paint job. There's only one thing that can actually use the sun's energy. Chlorophyll. And one little plant cell is more complex than a space shuttle. Cover more on that on video four. Now, evolution violates the second law, and evolution is wrong. Okay? Evolution does not violate the second law of thermodynamics. Um, those complex... Those complex pieces that are required to absorb energy exist. They exist. And that's all we need to counteract the second law of thermodynamics. The car engine exists. That's what we need to convert the fuel into useful energy. Chlorophyll and photosynthesis and all that, those exist. And that means evolution is capable of taking place. This textbook shows the kids a fossil starfish. It says 3.4 billion years old, the remains of the early ancestors of modern human beings. Was your great, 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 great grandpa a starfish? How about Discover Magazine? No. He's trying to frame this in such a way that it makes it sound absolutely ridiculous. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is exactly what happened. November 2004, was your ancestor a sea sponge? This is your ancestor. Wow, who's your daddy? Okay, that's weird. And what's even weirder is I didn't realize SpongeBob existed when this seminar series came out. That's actually kind of crazy. I had no idea that this seminar series was so recent. I thought this is... For some reason, I thought this seminar series was from the early 90s, but... Actually, I think it's from uh, 2003 or four or something. And yeah, SpongeBob was around at that point. But anyway, way to make things creepy, Kent. Thank you for saying that. Ancestor, a sea sponge? This is your ancestor. Wow, who's your daddy? <laughs> I don't know why people like that term. It is so incredibly creepy to me, I can't stand it. Please don't say that. <laughs> now, please don't laugh at this next picture, okay? This is going to be a picture of my brother <clears throat> when he first wakes up in the morning after his first cup of coffee, which apparently was a little too strong, okay? By the way, i got to warn these kids. Kids, listen carefully. Do not drink coffee. Because if you drink coffee when you're young, when you get married, your babies will be born naked and illiterate. What is he even talking about? I'm very concerned. And tea is worse. There was an Indian once that drank four gallons of iced tea. That night, he drowned in his teepee. <laughs> Be careful with that stuff. That's deadly. Yeah, real clever, Kent. Okay, let's move on. Anyway, this will be my brother. Now, please don't laugh. He can't help it. There he is right there. <laughs> Notice what the textbook says. 30 million years ago. Now kids, let me translate that for you. Anytime a textbook says millions of years ago, what it means is long ago and far away. No, it's very specific in many of these cases. We know exactly where these things happened and how long ago and all of that stuff. It's not as unknown and mysterious as he wants to make it out to be. By the by, I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you collect every single coin in this level, you get a special item. So I'm going to collect every one of them. I think I got it. 
Let's. I'll, I'll, we'll find out if I got it in just a second. That's it. Special mushroom house. I bet you guys didn't know this existed. This is a secret that most Mario players didn't know about. An anchor. I got an anchor. That's cool, right? All right, let's keep listening to Ken. That means a fairy tale is coming next, okay? That's your warning, fairy tale coming up. 30 million years ago, these critters evolved. Ooh, there's that word again. You gotta watch that one. It says they're You gotta watch that one, why? Are, you seem to be the only one that is having a problem understanding what this word means. Everybody else knows what the word evolved means. Ancestral to both humans and modern apes. Ancestors to humans? Grandpa? <laughs> what big eyes you have, Grandpa. <laughs> well, the better to see you with, my boy. You know, even teaching kids are nothing but an animal, and today, a lot of them act like animals. Even Barbara Reynolds figured it out. She said, your kids go ape in school? Here's why. He's being taught evolution. It has nothing to do with it. Millions, maybe billions of people fully understand evolution or know about it or whatever and accept it. By the way, it's, evolution's not something that you believe. It's something that you accept. It's a scientific fact. You can choose not to accept that scientific fact, but that's what it is. Uh, millions, maybe billions of people fully understand what it is and accept it and don't go nuts or whatever it is you said they do. Guess what, Johnny? You're an animal and share a common heritage with earthworms. Uh, you mean I'm just an animal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so you act like an animal. That's what he's getting at. That's what he's getting at. That's really sad and messed up that he's portraying it this way. Have you ever stopped and thought that possibly what we're teaching the kids is maybe affecting how they behave? Hmm? If you believe that, fine. Prove it. Do, do the research. Do the tests. Do, use a control group to figure that stuff out. You can't just come out here and say anything you want and claim that it's true. It doesn't work that way. If that's really true, then prove it. We have no reason to believe you until you do. What you believe determines how you behave. Kids are taught today, you know, that you're just an animal. The rock music these days is all full of death and destruction and... Oh, give me a break, dude. The rock music these days? Come on. Blood. Well, the Bible says they that hate me love death. Kids are taught today there are no absolutes. I was in a debate one time, and this professor said, Hoven, there are no absolutes. I said, are you absolutely sure? <laughs> it's an interesting point. Um, I, I've heard that, too. You can't be absolutely sure about anything. You can be 99 percent sure but you know your eyes could be lying to you there could be some being out there that is like tricking you into thinking this thing or that thing like you can't be a hundred percent sure about anything that's kind of the position in science um and and it's one that i adhere to as somebody that appreciates science he's just making light of it and trying to poke at science and make people distrust it and think it's ridiculous it's honestly sad Blew his little brain. Now, hold on a minute. How can I be absolutely sure? There's no absolutes. I was speaking in a public school in Pennsylvania a couple years ago, and this kid sat on the second row, and he said, Hoven, I'm an atheist. There's no God. I said, are you sure? He said, I'm sure. I said, well, let me ask you a question, son. I said, do you know everything? He said, oh, no, no. I said, okay, well, good. I said, do you think maybe you know half of everything? He said, oh, uh, this is that classic thing that... Um What's his name did? Uh, oh, God, what's his name? Um, Josh Feuerstein, that's his name. Josh Feuerstein, yeah, he, he made this ridiculous argument. This was his $10,000 atheist challenge or $100,000 atheist challenge or something like that. Yeah, I remember this one. Oh, my God, dude, I am sucking at this level. Actually, before we listen to Kent Hovind go through this, let me find the Feuerstein one. What's up, Josh Feuerstein here. So I'm here to issue the $100,000 atheist challenge to anybody that could provide me proof or evidence that God 
does not exist. I think it's rather ridiculous that there's been people for a long time that have said that God does not exist and yet they're unarmed because they have zero evidence and zero proof. How would that ever hold up in a court of law? Well, here's the real question. How would it ever hold up in a court of law for you to claim that he does exist? I don't have to claim that he doesn't exist. You have to prove to me that he does. Simple as that. You have the burden of proof. Quit trying to flip it around on us. If we were to look at absolute truth, and we were to look at the totality of all knowledge, all scientific facts, everything, and we were to be able to draw a circle that would represent it, it would look something like this, broad and expansive and large. And yet it is that if you were to draw a circle of everything, your mom's broad and expansive and large that you know every experience every scientific fact that you've ever learned whether in school or study would probably look something more like this now don't you think it's ironic that there's people that have lived in this little circle their entire life that are trying to claim that there's no god that exists outside of their knowledge well i don't think anybody is making that claim not one person uh, almost none, uh, certainly not in the atheist community on YouTube or whatever. What we are claiming is the Christian God doesn't exist because you make way too many presuppositions for that to even be possible. The claim that Jesus exists and he came and died for your sins and all that other stuff, there's a lot of baggage that comes with that claim and you simply haven't I mean, it, it, it's impossible. It's impossible for that to be the case. Aside from that, nobody is claiming there is no creator of the universe. We don't know that for a fact. We are just waiting for evidence on it. So this is a this is just twisting around the situation to make it look completely different than it is. Therefore, because they've never experienced him, he doesn't exist. Now the Notice how he conflates the universe was created by somebody or something with Jesus died for your sins. He, he combines the two. He assumes if one is true, then the other is true. The problem with truth and absolute truth is I believe that this generation doesn't like that concept because it means that there's moral law. It means that now that there's something that they will one day have to answer to. In fact, if you were to ask an atheist, I don't think he would ever actually be able to condemn something like the Holocaust and the killing. Of I condemn it. It's evil. I don't get my morals from the Bible. Nobody really gets their mor morals from the Bible. If you did you would be a much less moral person, a recognizably less moral person. The Bible's morals that, that it espouses are truly evil, the ones that don't contradict each other, at least. Millions and millions of innocent people. Why? Because he just believes that they're an accident. They're just merely some molecular structure, that, that they're just part of this scientific thing called evolution, survival of the fittest. Well, how then was Hitler just not the fittest. How can you ever condemn something like that? In fact, I he's talking about social Darwinism versus evolution. Uh, there are two completely different concepts. We're talking about scientific facts and how science works. You're talking about society, two different things. Look around the world in any society in almost any country in any sets of laws. Murder is something that is illegal. Why is it something that is illegal universally? Because I find it interesting that he recognizes that murder is illegal and evil universally, whether they have the Bible or not. Huh. Kind of seems like the Bible didn't have any sway in whether or not cultures recognized murder as evil, right? It's almost like they've recognized murder was evil since before the Bible was even written. How about that? The man knows it's wrong to murder someone else. If we were just some biological concept and as far as a, a human being and a man, how would we have that knowledge except that the Bible says that God writes those precepts upon our hearts? How is it? Where does it say that? I don't remember the Bible ever saying that. Um, is he making that up? I, maybe he's not. Maybe, maybe he really does have a verse for that, but I really do not remember that verse from the Bible at all that every society around the world would agree that murder is wrong. In fact, I guarantee that if there were no laws and no government, that you would feel wrong inside of you killing somebody. Why? Because God's written it on your heart. Yeah, so that's, jo that's Josh Feuerstein. That's his 
hundred thousand dollar atheist challenge. Absolutely ridiculous. And I apparently Kent Hovind is pre presenting that exact fallacy, that logical fallacy that Fierstein was using. Even if what you're saying proved that God was real, it doesn't prove that Yahweh, the God of the Bible, parent of Jesus, was real. And that Jesus turned water into wine and walked on water and all that other weird stuff that he did with water, whatever other things he did. Doesn't prove all that. All it proves at best, it doesn't even prove this. At best, it would prove we were created by somebody at some point. Could have been an alien civilization for all we know. We have no idea who created us. It doesn't even prove that. I said, do you know everything? He said, oh, no, no. I said, okay, well, good. I said, do you think maybe you know half of everything? He said, no. I said, okay, well, let's just pretend for a few minutes that you know half of everything. Would it be possible then for God to exist in the other half you don't know? Brand new thought rattled around in his brain for a while. Got lost, I'm sure. I said, by the way, son, if you're an atheist, let me ask you a simple question. How do you tell right from wrong? Certainly not by using the Bible, that monstrously evil book that says so many messed up things about morality. And when it doesn't say messed up things, it contradicts itself on morality. Uh, I would never use something like the Bible to come to my moral determinations. Ask an atheist that question sometime. How do you tell right from wrong? He said, that's easy. I decide what's right and wrong. He said, I'm the God of my own universe. I said, I'm glad to hear about that, son, because I am going to shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, oh, yeah, I can. You see, I am the God of my own universe, and I decided it's fine for me to shoot you. Yeah, he wants to make it out like morality is completely subjective and everybody's come to different moral decisions and all that stuff. In reality, we have all, as a society, come to the same moral conclusions. Just because we have. That's just what it is. We've all decided murder is wrong. We've all decided that we deserve rights as human beings. We deserve rights. We deserve the right to life. We deserve the right to I don't know, freedom of speech and things like that. If you look at the UN Declaration of Human Rights, there's a big-ass list. It's like 34 points long or something like that. Let's see. As a society, as a human society, we've decided that people deserve certain rights. There are 30 articles in the UN Declaration of Human Rights, it looks like. Article 1. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. They are endowed with reason and conscience and should act towards one another in a spirit of brotherhood. Every, uh, this is Article 3. Everyone has the right to life, liberty, and security of person. Article 4. No one shall be held in slavery or servitude. Slavery and the slave trade shall be prohibited in all their forms. Article 5. No one shall be subjected to torture or to cruel, inhuman, or degrading treatment or punishment. We've all decided that these things, as a, as a human race, we've decided these things are uh, owed to every human. And it's a government's responsibility to protect these rights of everybody. It has nothing to do with morality. It, we don't even need to involve morality. The government shouldn't be involved in dictating morality in any way. Uh, by the way, I'm about to use the anchor. I've never used the anchor before, I don't think. But let's try it. Okay, I've, I, I used the anchor. I probably should have waited to die before using the anchor to show you guys. But I guess the anchor will keep the boat where it is. Anyway, let's keep listening. I'll shoot you in five minutes. He said, you can't do that. I said, oh, yeah, I can. You see, I am the god of my own universe, and I decided it's fine for me to shoot you. Like I said, it doesn't matter what you decide it's fine to do. What matters is what the government, which rights the government will protect, which rights of mine the government will prevent you from taking. And every government in the world has decided to protect the right to life. Uh, on paper, anyways. You know, some of them are 
little too willing to take the right to life themselves, but that's neither here nor there. You see where that logic would lead in a hurry? If every man did that which was right in his own eyes, like the book of Judges says, serious problems for society, big time. How do you tell right from wrong? Simple question to ask an evolutionist. They don't have a way to tell. I mean, maybe, maybe Osama bin Laden should decide right from wrong. Huh? Maybe Bill Clinton should. He really wants this to be like just this relative confusing thing. Nobody knows. We have no idea. I intentionally died there just now, by the way, because I wanted to show you what the anchor does. See, normally the ship would like fly around to somewhere else, but I used the anchor before I entered, so it's staying put. I just wanted to show its use. I should decide right from wrong. Oh, hang on. Listen to Ken Tovin's ridiculous little political statement here. By the way, this is right before he went to jail for being a tax protester. Turns out the dude had never paid income taxes a day in his life, ever. He had never paid income taxes. He's, you know, at this point, what was he, 40 years old? 30 years uh, worth of income taxes were skipped by the time he went to jail. Oh, my God. The, I, apparently, I don't remember exact numbers, but from my understanding, he owed like millions of dollars or something in income taxes by the time he... Uh, by the time he went to jail for it. Millions of dollars. Oh, my God. I mean, maybe, maybe Osama bin Laden should decide right from wrong. Huh? Maybe Bill Clinton should decide right from wrong. There's his little political statement. Maybe Bill Clinton should decide. He knows his audience doesn't like Bill Clinton, who, by the way, was the previous president. I think at this time, George, uh, George Bush was the president. If he has any idea where to find it. I mean, how do you tell right from wrong? Simple. It's real easy to tell right from wrong. Thus saith the Lord. Now see, that is absolute. And the Lord said, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. Some people either don't know what God says, or maybe they just don't care what God says. But God says, don't do that, okay? <laughs> now if you did it in the past, okay, say, God, I'm sorry, that was dumb, and don't do it again, all right? A lot of teachers don't seem to understand. They just blindly follow the textbook and think they have to teach this evolution theory. No, you don't have to teach this evolution theory, okay? Yeah, you do. It's part of school curricula. Even if you don't accept the fact of evolution, you still have to inform the kids on what it is. The kids still need to understand what basic science says. Teachers can teach creation in public schools if they want. We've got a videotape called the Public School Presentation, which deals with all the laws on that about teaching. Uh, don't trust anything that Ken Tovin says about the law. He completely misunderstood the law and flagrantly broke it and went to jail for it. He does not understand the law at all. Teaching public schools, what, teaching creation in public schools. What happened was Arkansas and Louisiana passed laws to require that creation be taught. The court struck it down in both cases. They said you cannot require that creation be taught. They said the teachers can teach it if they want, but it has to be voluntary on the teacher's part. Even Stephen Gould said, no statute exists in any state to bar instruction in creation science. It could be taught before and it can be taught now. He was commenting on the 1987 Supreme Court decision. What's happened though, the ACLU, the American Communist Lawyers Union, why does everybody hate the ACLU so much? The ACLU is incredible. They only protect civil liberties, nothing more, nothing less. They have even protected the civil liberties of Nazis. That is what they believe in. If you are against the ACLU, you are against civil liberties. Simple as that. They have tried really hard to spread the propaganda around that you cannot talk about creation in the public schools, and that's just simply not true. It's always been perfectly fine to teach creation in the public schools. There's never been a law against that at all, okay? But if a teacher gets up in front of their class and a teacher says, okay, kid, listen, listen, you started off like a slime and you slowly evolved to a human. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that teaching is going to destroy some kid's faith in the Bible. It shouldn't. You can understand that that's the case. You can recognize that this is how science played out. And simultaneously, 
believe in God. The two things are not mutually exclusive. And it's so heartbreaking to me that this dude is doing absolutely everything that he can to make people feel like they are mutually exclusive. Give it a rest, man. I'm sorry, I meant the KKK, not Nazis. Yeah, you're right. uh, The ACLU defended the KKK's right to go through a town and protest. It was a Jewish lawyer that did it, too. I just don't get why people hate the ACLU so much. They really don't stand for anything except for civil liberties. That's it. No more, no less. Can't they get away with not teaching evolution in private schools? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. Um, you, you don't have to... You Private schools have the right to teach anything they want, especially in West Virginia. They don't have to teach anything at all if they don't want. Uh, I think you have to keep up with certain school curriculums or st- you have to take certain state tests or something like that, but yeah. Uh, okay, let's keep, let's keep listening. And anybody that destroys a child's faith better read what Jesus said about that. He said, Whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, It were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Anybody that teaches evolution is in trouble when they stand before God. The Bible says, Be not many masters, knowing we shall receive the greater condemnation. It's interesting, though, what happened. Back in the 1950s, the average textbook in America had very little evolution. Two or three thousand words was all. 1957, the Russians beat us in the space race by launching Sputnik, and Americans panicked. How many of you are old enough to remember the panic in America when the Russians were winning the space race? I mean, they had articles in Life magazine, how you can survive fallout. They said the Soviet... Okay, that had nothing to do with um, the space race, I don't believe. Like, I don't know, maybe. I, I Maybe I just don't know enough about that era, but I was pretty sure that the fallout was more related to the fear of nuclear weapons, not... The space race. Was the space race somehow related to the fear of nuclear weapons? I, I'm really not sure. Uh, I, I guess that's possible. I'm just not seeing the link between the two, weirdly. I think they were afraid Soviets would deploy nukes from space satellites. Oh, okay. Well, they did send satellites up, and yeah, they were used to create like dead man switches and stuff. So I guess that was probably a reasonable fear. Uh, other than just being like a proxy war between the two, I didn't think that there was like a legitimate... I, I don't know. I, I feel like he's not linking these two things together very, very well. Soviets are ahead of us in science because the Soviets teach evolution. We don't teach it in our schools. I mean, they... Yeah, they're ahead of us, or they were ahead of us. In, well, I don't think they were even ahead of us in science, honestly. It was pretty close. We were all pretty close. But they were teaching evolution in school. That's correct, uh, as far as I know. And that was definitely a benefit. They were actually winning as a result of accepting science, basic scientific facts. Like, come on. They had articles on how to build your own bomb shelter. People were building them in their backyard, okay, to survive nuclear fallout. Wait a minute. The Soviets are ahead in science because they teach evolution. What does evolution have to do with putting up a satellite? A lot, actually. Uh, You would be surprised, but it's incredibly useful to accept all kinds of, just accept science. It is one of the most detrimental things that you can do to reject basic scientific information. Uh, And you would truly be surprised how often evolution comes up in science and, and how it relates to everything. Well, then, in 1959, it was the 100-year anniversary of Darwin's book coming out. And in 1959, Eisenhower asked Congress for a billion dollars to push more evolution into the school system. And he got it. American textbooks were rewritten in the late 50s and early 60s to include more evolution. They called it the Cold War Reconstruction of American Science Education. Okay. Here's a question for you guys. Let me ask you what you guys think of this one. Let let me knock this around the old noggin, okay? What do you guys think? Do you guys think that there will ever be a time when evolution is just accepted by society? Like everybody, every single person in society accepts evolution. You think that time will ever come? 
I, I'm not super sure, honestly. Our whole science curriculum and other curriculums were rewritten to make sure evolution was taught. And by 1963, the average textbook had 33,000 words about evolution. By 1963, prayer was taken out of our school system. No, it wasn't. Prayer was never taken out of the schools. Prayer was no longer mandatory. Kids didn't have to pray with the teachers. They weren't mandated to. It wasn't a legal requirement to pray with teachers anymore. That's what happened. Prayer was not removed from schools. I just don't want to let them get away with framing it this way. It's a propagandistic way of framing it. Anybody remember that? Madeline Murray O'Hare? Madeline Murray O'Hare was the founder of American Atheists, by the way, and, uh, or by the by. And uh, she was brutally murdered, although from my understanding, it was not because she was an atheist. It was for totally unrelated reasons. I don't know for sure. I don't really remember the story clearly. I just seem to remember something about like, it wasn't because she was an atheist. By 1963, we started to see a great rise in premarital sex for every single age bracket. We saw a great rise in uh, sexually transmitted diseases for 10 to 14 year olds. We saw a great rise in unwed birth rates, a 550% increase in pregnancies. Yeah, okay. First of all, I just want to point out a lot of this stuff is probably completely made up by Kent and He likes to just totally make stuff up seriously I'm, i mean not usually you don't see people just make shit up whole cloth just lie about things like this but he does he straight up lies about this stuff i mean when i looked some of the, these facts up i was genuinely surprised that the dude was flat out lying about it but yeah, he makes a lot of this stuff up, so be very wary about anything that you believe from Kent Hovind, any of these facts. And aside from that, uh, you, you see what he's doing here, right? He's linking accepting science, evolution, as a fact with high pregnancy rates. He's saying because people accept evolution, pregnancy went up 553%. That's what he's saying right now. No joke. The difference is being aborted. Now, one third of all the kids born at the hospital are born to a couple that are not married, illegitimate children. A third of them. Now, listen carefully. If you are one of those, like I said, he made a lot of these facts up, so take it with a grain of salt. This is for you. Timothy was a half breed that never should have been born. Timothy's mommy was Jewish, his daddy was Greek. The Jews weren't supposed to marry anybody but Jews. Mama disobeyed. Timothy's the result. But he wanted to serve God, and God said, I'll take you, son. He wrote two books in your Bible. So if your parents messed up, you shut your mouth and quit your whining, and you go serve God with your life, okay? There's no excuses. God will use anybody, okay? The number of unmarried couples living together has increased radically since 1963. God's word hasn't changed. He said, thou shalt not commit adultery. He said, whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Yeah, um... That's all. A lot of that's from the Old Testament, which, by the by, was reversed by Jesus coming back. Um, there are new rules about all of this stuff in the New Testament. I don't know why he's checking the Old Testament for this. Jesus said, if you even look and lust, you've committed adultery already in your heart. Fair enough. He did say that. By the way, ladies, that's why it's important how you dress, okay? My daddy always said, if you're not in business, don't advertise. Divorce rates have gone crazy in this country. Child abuse is up 2,300%. Illegal drug use up 6,000%. Violent crimes nearly a 1,000% increase. Well, like I said, he made a lot of this stuff up. Uh, and not only did he make a lot of this up, but he does pretend that population growth isn't a factor here. I know that it's on this chart. But he's completely ignoring that. Uh, but he has a tendency to completely ignore that in the statistics. So he's saying population growth was basically completely stagnant from 1950 to 1990 or 2000, somewhere in there, right? Violent crime offenses went up 1,000%, but population didn't grow at all in those 50 years. Weird. 
I'm not sure I completely believe that. I'm not that old, you know, but I remember the days when you did not have to lock your house. Anybody remember those days? And you left the keys in the ignition all the time. You never took them out because you might lose them. Well, I guess it depends on the area that you lived in. Um, I would never do that in New York City, and I don't think anybody would. I, if you're in a rural area, people still do that. I didn't lock my door in West Virginia for a while when I was younger. And you go to the average high school, and half the pickup trucks in the parking lot had a loaded rifle hanging in the back window. And nobody got shot in school in those days, did they? That's correct. It's because there's a culture of... Uh, there is a gun culture in the U.S. that is absolutely toxic. Absolutely toxic. People are obsessed with guns. In Canada, everybody has a gun because they go hunting and everything else, but there isn't this toxic, bizarre culture of, like, loving and worshipping guns. It is very, very weird. And it is one of the reasons why we're in this situation. Toxic, bizarre gun culture. You probably didn't hear about this, but the kids at Columbine High School, that everybody, you know, were very strong believers in evolution. They did the thing on his birthday. Is that why that happened? Because they believed in evolution? Or are you conflating correlation with causation? They shot Isaiah Scholes just because he was black. He hated black people, so, so did they. This was evolution motivated. No, it wasn't. It was not an evolution motivated anything. Correlation versus causation. He does this all the time. Absolutely disgusting. And right after the show, Rosie O'Donnell got on her TV program and said, see, we need more gun control. Absolutely. Look at this. Isn't it interesting to like observe the culture war issues that were going on at the time? Like back in the year 2000 or whatever, people were kind of leaning into this stuff back then too wasn't anywhere near as intense back then as it is now. Uh, Rosie, those kids broke 18 gun laws going into that school. I don't think two more gun laws would have slowed them down. No, but it could have prevented them from getting the guns in the first place. More gun laws could have prevented those guns from even being in the house for them to have access. Kitty, there's no room up here right now. Go on. Go on. See, Rosie can't figure it out. But one guy figured out the whole thing and put it on the spare tire cover on his van. I saw that. I said, man, I have got to get a picture of this. This explains everything. He said, blaming guns for Columbine is like blaming spoons for Rosie O'Donnell being fat. It's ridiculous. They're completely ignoring the fact that it would be impossible for them to even have access to those weapons if they weren't so readily available to everybody. More access to guns in a country is directly correlated to more attacks. <laughs> it's not the spoon's fault, Rosie, okay? <laughs> and it's not the gun's fault either. Yeah, blame the gun, that's brilliant. SAT scores have plummeted since 1963. Twice in the last 40 years, they have dumbed down the test. They made the test dumber. So the scores would go back up. I don't know that that's true. I'm incredibly skeptical. Teen suicide rate's gone crazy. Now look, if I told you if you kissed a frog, it would turn to a prince. You say, no, frogs don't turn to princes. How many of you ladies got your husband by kissing a frog? Come on, let's see. Looks like only about three, okay? See, it doesn't happen very often, but in the textbooks it does. We started off like an amoeba and slowly evolved to a frog and very slowly became a prince. No. Complete misunderstanding, complete misrepresentation of the process of evolution, which has unequivocally been proven to be a fact. <laughs> it's the same fairy tale. See, if the frog turns to the prince quickly, we all know it's a fairy tale. But... If the frog turns to the prince slowly, oh, no, that's modern science. We can watch changes take place over time. Gradually, we watch changes take place in populations over time. I mean, artificial selection, natural selection, sexual selection, I mean, all this is super basic stuff that I know Kent understands. I know the dude's had this stuff explained to him at least a billion times at this point. He knows how this works. How he can deny it 
is beyond me. I believe the guy is a grifter, in my opinion. I don't say that about everybody, because I don't think that about everybody. This man slips into f different fallacies constantly. I know. Tell me about it. No, I'm sorry. That's still a fairy tale, okay? Even more of a fairy tale. The difference, though, is not a kiss. That won't do it anymore. Today, boys and girls, if you want to turn your frog to a prince, you have to have a super-duper special high-powered magic ingredient called billions and billions of years. How many have ever heard that before? Billions of years ago. It's in all the textbooks. It's on TV. He wants to make this a weird, mysterious, hard-to-understand process, when in reality, it's really not. It's one of the most straightforward processes in science. Like, I mean, you can definitely get more complex with it. It, it can take a while to explain if you want to start from the very beginning. But it's really not as complicated as he's making it out to be. I cannot... God, this, this fish absolutely hates me. I'm running out of power-ups here. It's in the magazines. It's in National Pornographic. A geographic, I mean. Billions in... This, this is a joke that he tells constantly. It drives me nuts, dude. This joke drives me absolutely crazy. He's always saying National Pornographic. I mean, geographic. It's really annoying, man. It's not even a funny joke. Like, come on. Billions of years ago, they talk about a, some, like a, some kind of fact of science, you know? Here's it a is. fourth grade textbook. It says, many millions of years ago. Now, wait a minute. If anybody ever says that to me, I say, uh, excuse me, were you there? It doesn't matter if we were there or not. We have the hard evidence. We have the, the scientific facts in front of us. We can prove without a shadow of a doubt that this is exactly how it happened. I'll say, no, of course I wasn't there. And I'll say, now, do you know the Earth is millions of years old? I mean, is this really part of science? Is this something we can observe and study and test and demonstrate? Yes, it is. I don't know that we proved it to this level at this point in time. I think we probably did prove it. I mean, this was 2004. Eventually, we learned a lot more about evolution in recent years, like... We, dude, I am so bad at this level. I am so bad at this level. Eventually, we used E. coli and fruit flies to prove different aspects, different parts of evolution. We've already proven that evolution is a fact. We know how it works. We have a strong understanding of it and everything else. No question in our minds. The, one of the problems with evolution is the fact that it takes so long to observe these changes. You need some kind of species that reproduces rapidly to observe this kind of thing. And in recent years, we observed E. coli reproducing. Over 30 years, we observed it evolving what intelligent design proponents would call irreducible complexity. We watched irreducible complexity evolve right in front of our eyes. On, uh, with E. coli bacteria, I believe. Because they reproduce like once every three days or something, their, their population doubles, something like that. We've watched it happen right in front of our eyes. We have a strong understanding of how this works, honestly. Straight. They'll say, well, no, but everybody believes the Earth is millions of years old. No, they don't. Most Americans believe the Earth is less than 10,000 years old and God made it. Less... Well, it doesn't matter what most people believe. What matters is what's true. And we know, without a shadow of a doubt, the Earth is 4.5 billion years old. We also happen to know that evolution is a fact. Less than 15% are ever evolutionists or atheists in the test that they take, in the surveys. The majority of Americans do not believe the Earth is millions of years old. Now, it's true that slightly more than half of the scientists believe in evolution. That's true. I agree. No. <laughs> slightly more than half the scientists believe in evolution? Well, first of all, evolution isn't something you believe in. I covered this earlier. It's something that you accept or don't accept. And second, it's, in t uh, it's significantly more than half. Agree. But that doesn't make it true. It's true they believe it, but what they believe is not true. See, just because a bunch of scientists believe something, that doesn't mean anything. Isn't that convenient? He was just using the exact opposite argument. Most of America believes that half of, or most of America believes that evolution is not true. 
He was using that to his advantage a minute ago. And now he's using the fact that it doesn't matter how many people believe this thing or that thing. It, it doesn't have any effect on its truth value. Now he's using that as an excuse. Interesting, right? There was a time when the scientists thought the planets go around the Earth. The scientists used to teach a big rock will fall faster than a little rock. They used to teach if you're sick, you have bad blood. Take out your blood and you will get better. Bloodletting, yeah, that, that's true. But that, a lot of that wasn't based on the scientific foundations that we have today. Our methods of coming to true conclusions weren't in use back then, basically. It was just people mixing woo with science back then. There were special places all over America to get your blood taken out. You could tell where they were because they had a white pole with a red stripe around it. The barber was the bloodletter. And right beside George Washington, when they were bleeding him to death, was a Bible that told him, the life of the flesh is in the blood. Man, if they'd have read that verse, he might still be alive today. No, because your interpretation of that verse is not universal. Your interpretation being, don't ever drain blood. Um, I guess that's the interpretation he was trying to get at with that. Well, he would have lived longer, okay? But listen, if you went scuba diving and you found a treasure chest full of gold coins, and I asked you the simple question, when did the boat sink? You say, I don't know. <laughs> well, look at the day. Well, you know, there are some things that we can figure out. I mean, we didn't have to be there to watch the Titanic sink to know when it sank. Uh, even if we didn't have records from that time, we could still draw some conclusions. You know, we could look at, like, the gowns that the skeletons were wearing. I don't know if they'd still be... I, I don't know. Maybe they degraded at this point. Who knows? I mean, there are a billion ways to determine when this boat sank without actually knowing when it sank. He's trying to make this whole thing seem relative, like there's no way of knowing if we weren't there, blah, blah, blah. It's just not how it works. Dates on the coins. If there's a coin in that box from 1750, you ought to be able to figure out the boat sank after 1750. How many can figure this out with no help at all? Okay. It couldn't sink before that, could it? You don't poke around in the box and find the oldest coin. You have to find the most recent coin, and that kind of limits when the boat could have sunk. That's called the limiting factor. Did you know there are probably a hundred different ways to tell how old the Earth is? A lot of them give big numbers, a lot of them give small numbers, but it's the small ones we've got to worry about. If you find a dinosaur bone, you should notice two things about it immediately. Number one, it does not talk. Number two, it does not have a date stamped on it. It does not say made by a dinosaur in 70 million BC. Okay, I'm not sure what he's getting at here. I'm kind of confused, but all right, I'm listening. In Taiwan. They don't say that, okay? So how do you tell the age of a fossil? How do you tell the age of the Earth? How old is this Earth anyway? Well, the Bible dates add up to about 6,000. Textbook says it's billions. Somebody is wrong. There's a difference between 6,000 and 20 billion. Congress doesn't seem to understand the difference, but there's a difference, okay? He is so ridiculous with some of his political beliefs. It, it drives me nuts. We'll talk about that in the next session. How do you show the Earth is not billions of years old? But if it is only 6,000 years old like the Bible teaches, that raises some interesting questions. What about the dinosaurs? What about carbon dating? How did the light from the stars get here? What about Grand Canyon? Didn't that take millions of years to... Yeah, I mean, these are actually some pretty interesting questions, uh, scientifically interesting questions, in my opinion. I'm not, I, I just find it fascinating, honestly. Like, a lot of the answers to this are really, really fascinating. Like, how did the light from the stars get here? That involves, like, an understanding of physics and stuff like that. I think it's really interesting. Storm, what about the geologic column? Well, folks, that's why my seminar is about 17 hours long. I am talking as fast as I can go. But we cover all that. We'll cover some more of that in just a minute. Stay tuned for part B. What is this, like a tape or something? Why is it? Oh, it is a tape. It's a VHS tape, but you don't have to turn it over like a cassette tape.